So far we have taken a specific second order circuit and set up the differential equation and analyzed it. Now we will look at the second order differential equation with normalized coefficients so that any other kind of circuit can also be easily analyzed. So we have the differential equation as this I will write the, the homogeneous equation like this. Okay. This can also of course be written as I do this just to normalize things in the way it is normally done. Okay, I think this part you probably already are familiar with from the spring mass system. All I did was to divide everything by LC, that's all. And I could of course write it for the case with the input Vs by LC. Okay. Now this can be written as d square Vc by dt square plus 2 zeta omega n dvc by dt plus omega n square vc equals omega n square vs. I mean I just pulled out all these things this omega n square is 1 by LC okay it has dimensions of frequency squared right 1 by LC has dimensions of uh, frequency squared. So this omega n and omega n is called the natural frequency and this uh, r by l you know that it has dimensions of frequency right and that happens to be defined as this two times this zeta which is the damping factor okay damping factor times omega n uh, first derivative of vc and so on okay so this is one possible way of uh, defining the constants and sometimes you do it slightly differently d square vc by dt square plus omega n by q dvc by dt plus omega n square vc equals omega n square vs. Okay. So what this kind of normalization lets us do is first of all we have written it for an LC circuit but if you normalize the constants like this if you define the constants like this it applies to any second order system that's why we do it that way that's all okay and in this case this q is known as the quality factor and obviously q is 1 by 2 zeta or zeta is 1 by 2 q okay This is fine. Now, uh, from the characteristic polynomial, we can uh, find the values of p, p1 and 2, and exponential p1t and exponential p2t will be in general the natural responses. Okay. So now we can classify the types of natural responses. We have already found those uh, types, right? There are three types. One where you have a combination of two exponentials. One you have a single exponential multiplied by a1 plus a2t, and the third one where you have an exponentially modulated sinusoid. That is. You have a sinusoid cos omega t plus phi multiplied by exponential uh, something. Okay. So these constants, the natural frequency omega n and the damping factor zeta, or the natural frequency omega n and the quality factor q, are some properties of the system. Okay. Just like for a first order system, we say something is the time constant. What is the time constant? It's what appears in the exponential. Okay. So similarly here, this omega n is some constant. It's a second order uh, differential equation. So we have two constants. We can either uh, leave the constants as they are in terms of component values or in a more general way we can uh, define this uh, uh, natural frequency omega n and the damping factor. Okay. We could also instead of these just use the values of p. We could simply use p1 and p2. Okay. So this is a little more general way of uh, associating with, with any other second order system. That's all. Okay. So there is nothing uh, special here. All I did was to redefine variables. Okay, in this page, if you look at it, all I have done is that. Now, what were the conditions? The characteristic polynomial was 
LC times P square plus RC times P plus 1 equals 0, okay, which alternately could also be written as 2 times zeta times omega n times P plus omega n square is 0. I divide by LC, that is all, okay. Okay, and we get we know that P one and two. What are they? What were the values? Minus R by two L plus or minus square root of R by two L whole squared minus one by L C. Okay, in terms of this uh, new constants, what is that? Omega n by 2 q, that is one way of uh, doing that, plus or minus, what do we have? Omega n by 2 q square minus omega n square. Okay, so now you can kind of take this omega n outside plus minus square root of okay or if you express it in terms of damping factor what is it okay i mean you can see the convenience already this uh, omega n which is the frequency that comes out and then whether uh, the roots are uh, real or repeated or uh, complex conjugate or are determined only by this damping factor zeta or the quality factor q, okay. So, We already saw that this real and distinct roots, when does this happen? When uh, R by 2L whole squared is more than 1 by LC, okay. Hey, by the way, what is the expression for this quality factor Q in terms of LC and so on? In this case, it is 1 by R square root L by C quality factor and the damping factor is R by 2 square root of C by L, okay. So, you can see that if the value of R becomes larger and larger for the same L and C, you will have higher damping factor or lower quality factor, okay. Now, real and distinct roots, this corresponds to what? In terms of quality factor, what is that? When do we have real and distinct roots in terms of quality factor? Q less than half or equivalently the damping factor greater than 1, okay, that is why it is called the damping factor, right. And then you have real and repeated roots if uh, the quality factor is equal to half or damping factor exactly equals 1. And finally, the complex conjugate roots when Q is more than half and the damping factor is less than 1, okay. So, this damping factor and quality factor are normally used constants, that is why I defined both of them, okay. So, in this case, you will get a response of the type A 1 exponential P 1 T plus A 2 exponential P 2 T, where P 1 and P 2 can also be expressed in terms of omega n and Q or zeta like this, okay. So, these are the values of P 1 and 2, okay. And in this case, we will have A 1 plus A 2 T exponential p 1 t, I will just call that p 1, right, both roots are p 1 and in this case we will have, we can call it 2 a naught or as a single constant a naught, it does not matter, it's, the point is that there is some constant there, okay, exponential p r t cos p i t plus phi, okay. So, you have to find this constant, I mean I could as well call this some uh, A1 or something, okay. 
factor of 2 doesn't have any significance you have to find the multiplying factor for this whole thing that's all okay so now what is the value of pr minus zeta omega n okay many the many ways to express it minus r by 2l okay this pr if uh, if this part is uh, negative the square root is purely imaginary and then this is the real part okay and this pr is negative that's the point so what happens what is the kind of response you have the exponential will decay so it will be a sinusoid but whose amplitude will go on decaying okay and then if you examine this p1 what is the value of p1 if z equals 1 minus z omega n right it will be some negative number also i mean it's the same minus r by 2l okay so then also the response will eventually decay and finally for this real and distinct case you can evaluate that both roots will be negative okay so when you have this negative sign both terms are negative obviously the result is negative when you have this positive sign you have some negative number and another positive number which is smaller than that so you will have both negative roots so this circuit is also always stable so in this case also the natural response dies down with time okay let's now examine the role of the damping factor in the natural response of the second order system the roots will be omega n minus zeta zeta square minus 1 okay now if zeta is very large okay then what happens is that this uh, square root of uh, zeta square minus 1 can be written as zeta times square root of 1 minus 1 by zeta square where this 1 by zeta square is a small number okay so this is approximately zeta times 1 minus you know this approximation right square root of 1 plus x is 1 plus x by 2 which is zeta minus 1 by 2 zeta okay so these uh, roots can be approximated as omega n minus zeta plus minus okay the two values will be basically when it's minus minus 2 zeta okay 1 by 2 zeta i said zeta is very large so that part is small what is the other root minus omega n by 2 zeta okay so these are the two roots and let's say on the same axis i plot let's say i call this uh, p2 and this is p1 exponential p1t exponential p2t okay what will they look like relatively let's say i start both of them with uh, unity exponential p1t and exponential p2t what will they look like it will of course start from 1 and decay to 0 but how will they do that which one will go to 0 quicker p2 right so exponential p2t would do that and exponential p1t would do that and for a given omega n the larger the value of zeta this exponential p1t gets keeps getting slower and slower okay as zeta increases okay so you will have two exponentials in the natural response one of them will die out very quickly uh, other one will take a very long time to die out okay this is fine so what happens is so let's say you start with uh, i mean you look at the natural response and for large values of zeta it will be dominated by this exponential p1t so it will be very very slow okay it will all be almost like a single exponential that's very slow as the damping factor reduces and when you reach critical damping you get some nice response like that okay now what happens when uh, zeta becomes very small
So what will happen is that it will uh, go to go out quickly like that, but then it will ring back and forth. Okay, and then if uh, zeta becomes very very small, what happens is that it becomes just as bad as the other case when zeta is very large. So it will go rapidly, but then it will start doing this. Okay, because what is the real part of uh, P1 and P2 when uh, the, they are complex conjugates? Minus omega and zeta. So when zeta becomes uh, very small, that means that that zeta omega n is very small number, and that's the exponential that is modulating the sinusoid, right? So that exponential is dying out very very slowly. So if you are looking for a clean settling, critically damped response is the one to look for. Okay, so in many cases you look for the system to have a critically damped response. Of course, it depends on what system it is, but uh, uh, that's the reason. So for a given omega n, a very large value of uh, zeta means that it will not ring like this, but it will be so sluggish it will uh, settle very slowly. And for a very small value of zeta, it will start off changing very rapidly, but then the sinusoidal part will stay for a long time. Okay. On the other hand, if you have critically damped stuff, it just goes down and then settles cleanly. Okay, so it gives you sort of the cleanest settling. So you look for damping factors which are around the critically damped value in many cases. Okay.